The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, June 13th, 2021, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to Talking Data. I'm Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, we're gonna hear your latest on inflation after the CPI report was released this morning. Inflation surprised to the upside again. Can you let us know what's the latest on the transitory debate? Yeah, so if you look at just the inflation statistics, those that have been arguing for transitory um, are on their back foot right now. <clears throat> the number surprised to the upside. They're quite alarming, actually, if you look at the data. Now, my preferred method of looking at the inflation data is to look at an annualized three-month or an annualized six-month basis now, because a year ago was the middle of the lockdown, and that's the so-called base effect. We knew prices were depressed back then, so there's going to be a big jump up. So let's look at what prices have done over the last three or six months. Over the last three months, headline and core inflation has advanced by 10% annualized, 10%. They're up two and a quarter percent just in 90 days. Over the last six months, they're up, core inflation is up on an annualized basis, 6%, 7% for headline inflation, seven and a quarter, 40 year highs. These are, like I said, these are numbers we have not seen since the early 1980s. And if you look through the data, it's a lot more than just the flexible reopening uh, prices that are going up. Yes, you know, used car prices are soaring and airline tickets are soaring and uh, restaurant prices are soaring. And people are saying, well, that's all part of the reopening. And you've got some of that. But you also had movements up in OER, owner's equivalent rent. And you had movements up across the board in a lot of other things. So it really does become a situation where the fact is we have inflation full stop. That's a fact, not an opinion. The opinion is whether or not that inflation will go away quickly, otherwise known as transitory. And this report combined with the last couple of reports and combined with the broad based measures and with owner's equivalent rent starting to move higher is making it look less transitory than we thought even yesterday or especially a month ago. Lastly, the big elephant in the room when it comes to inflation is owner's equivalent rent. It's 30% of core CPI. Uh, owner's equivalent rent, for those of you who don't know, that is the metric by which they measure housing inflation. They assume if you rented your house, what would you get for in rent on your house? And they do that by surveying rental properties all over across the country. Fannie Mae, who's done a deep dive in this stuff, has said uh, that they expect that owner's equivalent rent alone, it's only 30% of the index, could add 2% to inflation overall in 2022. So if you just get that 2% of inflation from owner's equivalent rent, housing inflation, add on everything else that we've got, it looks like we've got very high and elevated inflation and it might stick around until the end of 2022 and so therefore, those that are in the transitory camp have some explaining to do. Let's turn next to bond yields. They've been trending a lot lower. What does this tell us about the transitory debate? The exact opposite. Those that are not in the transitory camp, and I count myself in that camp, have some explaining to do. Because as much as the argument is that we see inflation, it's there, it's not going to go away, the bond market surely is acting like it is transitory and it is going to go away because yields have been falling. We were at 180 yield in March. We got down to 125 last week. We're trading at around 140 right now in terms of yields. There was hardly any reaction to the inflation data when the report came out this morning. Bond yields went up only because the 30-year bond auction was not that well received uh, this afternoon. Interesting that the bond auction elicited a bigger response out of the bond market 
than the inflation numbers themselves. So there's a, uh, the transitory camp, you know, you could say, look, none of the inflation data is working your way. They'll say, yes, but the bond market is working my way. And the non-transitory camp could basically say all the inflation data is working my way, but the bond market is not working my way. Now, what's going on with the bond market? Uh, Bank of America puts out their global fund manager survey and the July survey came out the day we're recording on uh, July 13th. And it showed that 70% of respondents believe that inflation is transitory and the number that expect inflation to go higher is now at a one year low. So it seems like the, the fund management community is basically decided that inflation is transitory and a non-issue. Now, part of that is always momentum. You know, whenever you ask a bunch of fund managers uh, an opinion about something, um, it's really what's the market doing. So what is your opinion about inflation? Bond yields are falling, there is no inflation. Data doesn't matter. What is your opinion about inflation? Bond yields are rising, there's more inflation. Data doesn't matter. Since bond yields are falling, they're under the camp that it is transitory. But I do think it is a bigger issue that a lot of people just are not afraid of inflation in the fixed income community, at least not yet. And that may come a day when they're going to have to uh, reconcile that position. That's our next question is how do these two stories get reconciled? Yeah, that is a good question. I think it's going to be the thing that we're going to have to battle against uh, as we move forward from here. My guess is it will come reconciled from a third factor I'm going to throw out there, and that's the risk markets, the corporate bond market, the stock market, the high yield market, and the like. And here's why. Um, our, we are in earnings season right now, and it just started the day we're recording. The financials came out, and we got 98% of the S&P ahead of us over the next couple of weeks that are going to report. The expectations are that earnings are going to be up 65 to 70% year over year. Again, there was a Bates effect. Everybody was locked down a year ago, losing money. So your year over year gain is gonna look huge. Uh, so there's this expectation, we're gonna have this big boom in earnings. In the last couple of quarters, we've had a boom in earnings, but you're gonna, you're gonna have to pay for that boom in earnings because valuations in the stock market are extraordinarily high. 23 forward PE on the S&P 500, that's the next 12 month earnings estimates divided by the price. One of the highest numbers we've ever seen. Very close to the bubble peak 2000s, we got to 26 or so. A lot of other metrics are showing that as well too. If we don't have inflation, the risk markets will be fine and I think they'll continue to trend higher and there won't be any problem. If we get any kind of inflation, the fear is that will force the Fed to at least acknowledge it. Maybe I'm not saying they're going to taper or tighten rates, but at least acknowledge it. And if they do, you could see a wobble in the risk markets. Corporate bond spreads widen, the stock market corrects, and then the bond market will start to take this inflation number seriously. Now, what is it I just said? I just said, the stock market is going to drive the bond market. But for the last couple of decades, everybody's thought it's been the other way. The bond market drives the stock market. Why do I think it's going to be that way? The Fed is buying a trillion and a half dollars of bonds a year, 120 billion a month. I think they've got a big old footprint that they've stepped all over the bond market and that the bond market's signaling is not what it used to be. The beauty of the bond market signaling used to be it was a pure market signal. It isn't anymore. The Fed owns 32% of the treasury bond and note, note and bond market uh, right now. They own a quarter of the treasury tips or treasury inflation protected market as well too. So that footprint is definitely muddying the signal from the bond market. So how do I reconcile? The bond market doesn't care about inflation. The inflation numbers look pretty obvious. Does the stock market and do corporate bonds start to care about it? here soon. And what could get them upset? They're feasting on the idea that they got cheap Fed money. And if there's any kind of blink in that Fed money, you could see it show up in the stock market and then the bond market will go, hey, we've got an inflation problem and we'll see how it goes from there. 
I suspect it will get uh, uh, reconciled before the end of the year. I am an inflationista. I think inflation is going to be a bigger problem than we think. I think it means that bond yields are going to go up. The stock market might struggle. But I've got six more months, I think, before we see that happen. But I think that that's how we eventually reconcile this story. Well, Jim, thank you for your thoughts today, and thank you for everyone for joining us. As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianca Research and Arbor Data Science. For further information or any questions, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.